So the way that the international financial system works is that rich countries deposit funds in the IMF and World Bank, uh, and they are creditors to those institutions, and then poor countries borrow money. They borrow money for industrial projects, dams, uh, agricultural modernization. That all comes from the World Bank, and then they also borrow large chunks of money uh, to address balance of payments issues. So basically when they go broke, when they run out of money, uh, they get a bailout from the IMF. So those two institutions give out enormous sums of money. I mean, we're talking between them more than a trillion dollars that they have in terms of a lending capacity. And the problem is that this debt is not a gift, right? So anyone who has a credit card understands when you borrow, you have to pay back more. You have to pay back principal plus interest. So a lot of developing nations in the 60s and 70s and 80s like borrowed a lot. I mean, they borrowed a lot they borrowed a ton of money and what ends up happening is they have to pay it back plus. So you have, what ends up happening is you have like a resource drain. So instead of like the common myth is that uh, rich countries give aid to poor countries or they assist poor countries. The reality since 1982 is that the flow of funds internationally has been from poor countries to rich countries. And today it's like a pretty sizable gap. So for example, in 2012, uh, about 1.2 or 1.3 trillion dollars flowed into poor countries or developing world countries. Um, it's like aid, assistance, income, investment, remittance, all that stuff going in. 3.3 trillion flowed out. Okay, so you basically you have like a resource drain. You have like the North benefiting from the South. You have like wages in the South being deflated and depressed to increase the quality of life of people in the North. And this is just not something that people really understand. So I wanted to give a presentation about that. And it applies to Ghana because Ghana is about to get its 17th bailout from the IMF. And what does that mean? That's going to mean currency devaluation, shrinking bank credit, removal of like state investment in education and health care, and uh, this maybe like a, like a ceiling on wages and um, and you know, end to sort of gasoline subsidy, some sort of mix of that. Like they'll have to agree to do to take the money. So it's basically like they have to like figure out how to cut expenses. That's what the IMF wants to see, and they want to do that because they want the country to produce more for the outside world. So they want more exports. So in Ghana's case, stuff like gold or cotton, right? Uh, countries in this region were traditionally engineered by the IMF and World Bank to produce things like cotton so that rich countries could take it, or so that other countries like China could take it. Um, it is, it is a, a staggering process and outcome. Like what it really has done is it's taken countries which were poor, but could feed themselves, and it's made them still poor, but also now they can't feed themselves. So you've gone from poor and independent to poor and dependent. So to give you an example, Africa as a continent imports 85% of its food. This is outrageous. I mean, the continent should produce all of its food. That wasn't, that's not because Africa's like, doesn't know any better or doesn't have the skills or any of this stuff. No, it's because it was like, colonized and then it was engineered by foreign powers with the consent of dictators. So corrupt dictators um, work hand in hand with the IMF and World Bank to, to, to put their population deeper and deeper into debt.